to EV or not to EV? That is the question. Data shows some consumers are wary of the price and the effectiveness of the models. One minute they're hot. The Canadian government's trying to boost interest in electric vehicles to meet their goals. The next minute they're not. It is a big shift and some are concerned about affordability and a shortage of electricity. So what are we to make of all the different signals surrounding the popularity or decline of electric vehicles in Canada? As EVs are growing in popularity, we're also seeing a lot more misinformation being spread about them. If you've been following the electric vehicle scene over the past few years, I'm sure you've heard things like EVs will crash the grid. Is it true? Will electric vehicles crash the grid or put excessive strain on it, as happened recently in Alberta due to a cold snap? There's no world in which we're going to roll out all these electric vehicles and not upgrade the grid. Translation, it's not as though every car is going to become electric overnight. If that were to happen, we'd have a problem, but... Between now and 2050, a doubling of peak capacity is still only a few percent addition per year. But we have to plan. The feds want every new car sold in Canada to be electric by 2035. That's a tall order unless you live in Quebec, Ontario, or BC. Nationwide, EVs and hybrids only made up 12% of all new car registrations at the end of 2023. There are real challenges to electrification, including affordability and charging infrastructure. But EV advocate Daniel Breton says, with the right mix of regulation and education, it is possible to hit those sales mandates. And there's already proof of that. The BC target for 2026 is 26%. BC reached its target during Q3 of 2023, three years ahead of schedule. In Quebec, it was 15% last year. We were at 23%. To say that we won't be able to reach those targets doesn't take into consideration the simple fact that car manufacturers, most of them, will always comply, but always complain. Then, of course, there's that nagging concern about battery range. There are thousands of charging stations in big cities, as well as in rural parts of Canada, as shown on this map. But we're still a long way from ditching the pump for the plug. Luckily, some businesses are thinking forward to reduce range anxiety. Kendra Emery owns a guest ranch in a rural corner of eastern Manitoba. More than 140 kilometers away from Winnipeg, she's making it easier for clients to relax and recharge. It was pretty slow on the uptake for the first year, uh, but we found this past summer, I'm not sure if it was post-pandemic, folks are driving across the country again, but uh, there was quite a bit more uptake. Of course, nobody likes pulling into a charging station only to see that it's not working or having to struggle with how to use an app. Every week I stop at a charger, I have to explain a new EV owner how to plug their vehicle and how to use the app or the charger every week. But since the vast majority of charging happens at home, Breton says, take a look at Norway. They have invested a lot in making sure that people install as many chargers as possible at home or in the multi-unit residential building so that there's less of a need for public charging. Now, what about the batteries themselves? There were lots of reports of batteries dying in the cold in the winter. Some Tesla drivers learned the hard way about how cold weather impacts their battery life. Mark Favoda wanted to put his Tesla to the test driving it from Prince George, B.C. to McBride in bone-chilling temperatures this past January. We're well into this trip to McBride, looking at some beautiful mountains. So we're past the point of no return now. So that means going back would be a bad idea. 66 kilometers left to get to McBride with 46% charge. We're going to do pretty good. He found the car did lose about 40 to 50% efficiency, but he still made the 210-kilometer trip with 25% battery power remaining. I really thought this cold weather was gonna take quite a bit more. The good news, all over the world, engineers are working on the technology to improve how batteries are designed. Can you imagine a world where we have a battery that can be charged, you know, half an hour, and you got a range of a thousand kilometers? It's, it's not inconceivable that's going to happen. 
I was provided a quote at $50,000. Between the battery installation and taxes, it totaled just over $50,000. But what then about those horror stories of battery replacements costing more than the cost of the vehicle? One BC EV owner was shocked when he discovered the price of replacing his EV battery was going to cost more than the value of the car. Faruqi says part of the problem is that there are not yet enough engineers trained at the dealership level to take a battery apart and examine its components to see if they can be repaired. There's a lot of misconceptions right now about what's really going on. You know, one of the things that we're doing in our course is we're teaching technicians to take a deeper dive into, into these things. So if your dealer tells you the battery needs to be replaced, make sure to ask them, did they open the battery and take a detailed look inside? Last but not least, do EVs actually reduce emissions? The power used to charge them has to come from somewhere. The good news, in Canada, most of our electricity is clean. There's no question that you get a very substantial greenhouse gas reduction from deploying electric vehicles. And Posen says, even in places where power comes from fossil fuels, EVs still beat gas engines over a two to three year period. But, he says, they are not a panacea. EVs, after all, are still cars. There's no question that driving less, switching from a gas car to either active transit and biking, walking, or to public transit, those things are going to have a bigger impact than switching to an electric vehicle, right? So I always say, if you're driving, I'd rather it be electric. Better still not to drive. There are still a lot of questions asked to the future of EVs in Canada, but as provinces like BC and Quebec show, there is a demand and people are willing to change. But for a truly greener future, we'll have to look beyond the electric vehicle. Kamya Razavi, Global News.